Hey everyone, Tim again, Tim's Computer Repair. I've got a laptop here. This is a gaming computer in MSI, model MS-16P7. I will say that this laptop is severely overheating all the way to the point to where I don't really want to record and show you guys because it is well past the 90s, close to 100, thermal throttling. I don't want to put any more stress on this processor and this GPU than I have to. You just have to take my word for it. We're going to replace the thermal paste on this machine. Now on this particular laptop, we are going to use two different types of thermal material. Why two different types? Well, I'll have to show you. First, we're going to just remove all the screws that are on the bottom of the laptop here, which I've already done. And then the bottom of the case here should just pop right off. No problems. Now I've already been into this laptop, but I figured I would fire up the camera, show you guys what I'm doing here. There will be a battery you have to remove once the back cover is off. It's just a couple screws you take out and the battery just pops right off like that. Then you'll have to disconnect the, the uh, power jack cable, the power cable there that's connected to the board. You just unplug it because it's in the way of the heat sink. We need to remove the heat sink. The next obvious step is to remove all of the screws that are holding the heat sink in place. There's a total of seven screws altogether. Four of them come completely out and the other three are captive screws and those stay on the heat sink. You just have to loosen them up. Then there's a screw here on the right where the fan is that we need to remove. And there's also a second one that needs to be removed, as you see here. We removed two more screws from the fan area on the other side. There's two of those there also. And this would allow us to be ready to remove the heat sink. We must first make sure that both fans are unplugged from the motherboard. Then we would have to gently and meticulously kind of wiggle the Heat sink back and forth, maybe get a, a plastic spudger, kind of pry up a little bit. Be very careful not to bend the heat sink. It can be a bit sticky sometimes to, to get these things off, and you may actually have to apply a little heat to uh, loosen things up a little bit. But I managed to, to get this one off without heat, uh, so that worked, out, that worked out pretty good. The key thing is not to force anything. Don't pry too hard. Work with it nice and slowly. It will come off. You have to just have some patience. Okay, now this is why we're using two different types of thermal material. You can see here the GPU and CPU have one type of thermal material. And these voltage regulators, these V-regs that you see on the board, they have a different type of thermal material. And the reason for that is because the, the gray type of thermal material for the, for the CPU and GPU have a slight conductivity so you don't want to be using those on the v-regs because it's a the, it's a lot bigger of a chance of that thermal material oozing off onto uh, sensitive components that are around it versus you know on the die of the gpu and cpu so i'm going to show you what we're going to use here so now the obvious thing is we want to go ahead and clean up all this thermal compound off of this heat sink and off the motherboard itself. I'm here using a plastic spudger just to kind of scrape off some of the excess uh, thermal material here. We're going to get it all nice and clean the best we can. Same thing on the board, just use the end of my spudger here just to kind of scrape up all of the excess. And then from that point, I go back with some isopropyl alcohol and put a final clean up on, the, on all the surfaces to be sure that there is no leftover debris from the, th the old thermal material. As you can see here, I'm using isopropyl alcohol to kind of wipe things down here really good. And we'll be sure that all is dried really nicely. And we'll be uh, ready to apply our thermal compound. Now, there are all sorts of debates about what's the best thermal paste to use for your CPU, GPU. I personally think this Crynot Thermal Grizzly Thermal Paste is, is one of the best thermal materials that you can use. So this is what I'm going to go with. And I will have a link down below this video in the description 
with these two different types of thermal materials that I'm using. But we're going to go with Thermal Grizzly here for the CPU and GPU. Now for the V-Regs, I'm using a different type of thermal material. This is by Janelle. It's just strictly Janelle Thermal Grease, G104. It even states right here on the box that it is non-conductive. And not only is it non-conductive, it, it even has a different look to it. This is a white uh, material compound versus the Thermal Grizzly would be gray. And that's one way of of noting which type of thermal material is initially applied to uh, your motherboard. This comes in a tube and it's got a nice little uh, cap that you put on there for, for precision applications. Let's just start off with our Thermal Grizzly. Going to apply some to our CPU and GPU dies here. Now I tried using their little applicator they give you, but it seemed a little clunky to me. I didn't like it. I'm going to go back to my um, old way of spreading thermal material and what I actually like to use is uh, is a razor blade. I just gently lay the blade down at an angle so I don't scratch anything and the blade you know is so thin that it spreads it very nicely a lot easier than trying to use that little tool they give you. Now you can get plastic uh, razor blades actually online they would probably maybe be better than this method but this is what I had available so that's all we need is a nice thin layer of thermal material and we'll do the same thing to the other die here get a nice nice thin layer of thermal grizzly here and we're done with that and now we can move on to the v-regs we don't have to apply much material at all on these guys here just a very small amount Spread them nice and thin as you did with the two dies. And this time I am using the tool that they provided. It actually did pretty good for these. So keep that in mind. Once we have uh, all these uh, components covered properly. Hey, it is time to put our heat sink back on. And we're going to give this a test to see if it did any good. Mount our heat sink back on. Put our screws back in. Tighten everything up. Go ahead and get all of our connections put back like they were. And uh, let's stress test this guy. So I'm using OCCT, the overclock checking tool. And look at here. I mean, we're at 100% CPU, 61C. Nice and cool. We have no errors. Looking good. This job is done. Hey guys, if you like this content, how about giving me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and uh, if you have any comments, hey, good or bad, leave them down below. Until next time, everybody, see you soon.